situation of black people in this country. Well, you know, I started becoming involved in the movement uh, for sort of desegregation and racial equality when I moved south in 1956 to teach at a black women's college in Atlanta, Georgia, Spelman College. I became involved in the movement. So uh, that was in 1956. So here we are just about 50 years later. And talking about the trajectory, well, um, we have gone from a tightly segregated society in the South and a partially segregated society in the North to a more open society. Not a fully integrated society, but certainly uh, the South has changed. Legal segregation, which existed, is over. We are seeing more black people and white people doing things together. There is more intermarriage, which of course the people feared, but which is a good thing, which uh, come to think of it, Obama represents in a good way. Uh, this progress has been made. Uh, there's now uh, perhaps 10, 20 percent of the black population which is economically much better off uh, than ever has been true of that part of the black population before. Uh, there are more openings in media and business in the professions for a certain number of black people. But I speak about 10 or 20 percent for the vast majority of black people, their lives are still constricted by poverty and racism. So the civil rights movement uh, accomplished a good deal uh, by beginning to remove uh, some of the important social barriers. What it did not remove uh, was the barrier of class, the barrier of uh, economic injustice. Martin Luther King recognized this. That's why toward the end of his life he began working for uh, economic rights for black people. Uh, so the trajectory is one which took a very sharp upturn in the 1960s and which uh, then has, uh, you might say, settled down into a, a situation which is not going to change very much until there's a change in the economic system of this country. So long as we have an economic system based on profit and corporate wealth, there's going to be an impoverished class. And so long as there is an impoverished class, I'm talking about the 40 million people who don't have health care, the 20 percent of the children in the country who grow up very, very poor. Uh, so long as we have an impoverished class, uh, black people will be disproportionately in that class. So the trajectory has reached a point where it is not going to go up much further unless we have economic changes which benefit not just black people but white people. Fundamental change in our economic and social system. Well, those changes have to be uh, for the government to uh, go back and look at what the New Deal did in the 1930s. The New Deal was not constrained, as governments are today, by this idea, oh, government must not take a hand in the economy, which is a hypocritical remark anyway, because the government takes a hand in the economy all the time. It just took a big hand in the economy to help uh, the financial institutions. When I say going back to the New Deal, the principle that the government must take care of people, the government has to guarantee jobs to everybody. Uh, because the private enterprise won't do it, has not been able to do it. The government has to guarantee decent housing for everybody, and which, again, private enterprise cannot do. The government has to get rid of privatization in the health system, guarantee free medical care for everybody, what is called a single-payer system. Uh, these are the things that, the, that need to be done if we are going to have uh, an egalitarian and just and humane society uh, for people of all races.